All right, I am going to call the City of Iowa City formal meeting together um, to order for the June 4th, 2024. Roll call, please. Alter? Here. Burgess? Here. Dunn? Here. Harmson? Here. Moe? Saleh? Yes. Teague? Here. Welcome to everyone that is in person and those that are joining us virtually. Item number two is proclamations and 2A is gun violence awareness day. Whereas every day more than 120 Americans are killed by gun violence and more than 200 are shot and wounded with an average of more than 48,000 gun homicides every year making Americans 26 times more likely to die by gun homicide than people in other high income countries. And whereas Iowa has 332 gun deaths every year with a rate of 10.3 deaths per 100,000 people, a crisis that costs the state 4.2 billion each year, of which 53 million is paid by taxpayers, Iowa has the 42nd highest rate of gun deaths in the US. And whereas support for the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding law residents goes hand in hand with keeping guns away from people with dangerous histories. <laughs> and whereas elected officials and law enforcement officers in partnership with local violence and adventure activists and resources know their communities best and are the most familiar with local criminal activity and how to address it and are best positioned to understand how to keep their community safe. And whereas gun violence prevention is more important than ever as we see an increase in fire firearm homicides and non-fatal shootings across the country, increased calls to suicide and domestic violence hotlines, and whereas in January 2023, and I'm sorry, in January 2013, Hadia Pendleton was tragically shot and killed at the age of 15 while at a park with friends. On June 7, 2024, her 27th birthday, people across the United States will recognize National Gun Violence Awareness Day and wear orange in tribute to Hadia and other victims of gun violence as well as survivors and loved ones of those victims. Hydea's friends who asked their classmates to commemorate her life by wearing orange. This color was chosen because hunters wear orange to announce themselves to other hunters when out in the woods. And orange is a color that symbolizes the value of life, of human life. And whereas we renew our commitment to reduce gun violence and pledge to do all we can to keep firearms out of the wrong hands and encourage responsible gun ownership to help keep our families and communities safe. Now, therefore, I, Bruce Teague, Mayor of Iowa City, do hereby proclaim June 7, 2024, to be Gun Violence Awareness Day in Iowa City, Iowa. We encourage everyone to honor and remember all victims and survivors of gun violence to support their local communities, efforts to prevent the tragic effects of gun violence, and declare that we as a count, uh, count country must do more to end this public health crisis. And to receive this is the Community Violence Prevention Coordinator, Jess Lang. Good evening. As Mayor Teague said, I am Jess Lang. I work with Johnson County as the Community Violence Prevention Coordinator. Um, I just wanted to thank you, Mayor Teague, for all of your support um, in the last year since the Johnson County CVI has started and been building. Um, I also want to thank the support of the entire council. Um, I also want to thank you, your Iowa City Police Department, your officers have been instrumental in um, helping me get this off the ground and getting guns out of the hands of people in our community and keeping the homicides at zero. That's the hope. So um, thank you very much for all your support. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to move on to 2B, which is Pride Month. Whereas LGBTQ plus communities across the nation annually celebrate pride in their culture and community in the month of June. 
And whereas the annual celebration of Pride began as a collective protest for the rights of LGBTQ plus individuals and communities. And whereas the national tradition of celebrating Pride in June is a tribute to the Stonewall riots of June 1969 in New York City, which are remembered as the launch of the modern LGBTQ plus rights movement. And whereas transgender persons of color, including Marsha P. Johnson, Sylvia Rivera, and Storm de uh, Lavari, Lavari, were primary leaders in the Stonewall expression of just treatment for LGBTQ plus people and gave their work and lives to the cause. And whereas the city of Iowa City recognizes that many LGBT, LGBTQ plus lives that continue to be lost each year in pursuit of living out their authentic identities, in particular transgender persons of color, and whereas the city of Iowa City welcomes and accepts people of diverse sexual orientations, gender identities, and gender expressions, and is proud to celebrate the contributions and culture of all residents. And whereas each year, Iowa City Pride brings together thousands of LG LGBTQ plus persons from across Iowa and beyond to celebrate their shared identities and experiences. And whereas Iowa City Pride is celebrating its 54th annual Pride anniversary and the 55th anniversary of Stonewall this June. And whereas Iowa City Pride will host its annual Iowa City Pride on June 15th in downtown Iowa City, and I encourage all to attend the celebratory event, which includes a parade. Now, therefore, I, Bruce Teague, Mayor of Iowa City, Iowa, do hereby proclaim the month of June 2024 to be LGBTQ plus Pride Month in Iowa City and encourage all to reflect on the ongoing struggle for equality, mem for equality members of the LGBTQ plus community face and celebrate the contributions that enhance our community. And to uh, receive this proclamation is the president of Iowa City Pride and also our nighttime mayor, Joe Riley. Uh, thank you, Mayor Teague and uh, Pro Tem Soleil and Council. Um, I feel like just about a year ago, I was standing here telling you we we're going to have our biggest festival yet. And I'm here to tell you this year we're having our biggest festival yet. Measured the Ped Mall. We're going to fit everybody in and still leave room for fire lanes, which is great. Um, our festival theme this year is Forward with Strength. And when we think about um, what that means in strength, it's relying on each other. It's showing up. It's being public and representative and seeing yourself out in public, uh, people like you. And with our events, we like to keep them free and having that exposure, that sense of community out here at no cost to our community is, is one of our goals. Some of the new, uh, some new programming elements that you may be excited about this year. We now have an after hours show that's completely free to attend at the Inglert, which um, if you're up past 10 p.m. like I am, it goes from 10 to 12 a.m. with uh, headliner transgender transgender artist Miss White. And then also we have a new temporary art installation uh, that will build and grow throughout the day. Uh, and then it will be gone the next day, Jeff. And uh, <laughs> uh, uh, done by our partners at Public Space One. Um, so it'll be really exciting. Um, it just keeps growing and we're so glad to have your support. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to all the other supporters that came for both the gun violence intervention as well as uh, the Pride Committee. So thanks to all of you. We're going to move on to items uh, number three through seven, except I do want to pull 6E for a separate consideration. So could I get a motion to approve? Mayor, the con I'm sorry. I'd like to pull 5C for a separate consideration as well. Which one? 5C. 5C. Okay. Any other Separate considerations? Okay. All right, could I get a uh, motion to approve the consent uh, agenda for items three through seven, except for 6A, 6E, 
and 5C that will get separate consideration. So moved. Moved by Dunn. Second. Seconded by Burgess, I think. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Anyone from the public like to uh, discuss this? If you are online, please raise your virtual hand. Say no one in person or online. Council discussion. Roll call, please. Harmson? Uh, yes. Sella? Yes. Teague? Yes. Alter? Yes. Burgess? Yes. Done. Yes. Motion passes 6 to 0. We're going to move on to item number 5C. Um, for consideration, could I get a motion to approve 5C? So moved. Second. Moved by Don, seconded by um, Harmson. He's the only male voice on my right tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, anyone from the public like to discuss this topic? Seeing no one in public, um, seeing no one in person or online council discussion. Roll call, please. Sala? Yes. Teague? Yes. Alter? Yes. Burgess? Yes. Dunn? No. Harmson? Yes. Motion passes five to one. We're on to item number uh, 6E, which Councilor Burgess will be recusing um, herself. Yeah. Could I get a motion to approve uh, item 6E? So moved. Second. Uh, moved by Don, seconded by Alter. Anyone from the public like to address this topic? Seeing no one in person or online, council discussion. Roll call, please. Sella? Yes. Teague? Yes. Alter? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Harmson? Yes. Motion passes five to zero. All right. We are. We're on to item number eight, which is community comment. Um, and this is an opportunity for people to speak on anything that is not on the council agenda. Um, and welcome. You have up to three minutes. Hey, good afternoon, good evening. Um, first of all, there is a county supervisor's uh, election. My name is Brandon Ross. I'm not running for anything, thank you. Uh, there is a county supervisor's election going on till eight o'clock, it's good to know. Uh, good candidates like Mandy Remington, Rod Sullivan, Roy Sand. If I don't remember everybody, thank you. Uh, anyway, I'm here today uh, because uh, I want to remind people, please uh, continue to write your Congress, your House members, your the White House, and tell uh, your representatives to stop, stop uh, the sending of uh, arms uh, to countries uh, much uh, like Israel, which is uh, basically bombing Hamas, uh, to, uh, to Ukraine, uh, which is kind of a, re a fascist regime right now. Uh, which is just, uh, well, I'll get into that, and also Taiwan. I don't know why we're bothering Chinese people at this point. We should, we should really tell our Congress people to stop the aggression against these people. First of all, I am Ukrainian. Uh, my family, half my family is from Kiev uh, area for hundreds of years. I am second generation Ukrainian American. I'm also Jewish on that side. Um, I would like to say that uh, the most recent news regarding that particular conflict is that uh, Anthony Blinken and uh, and Biden, uh, President Biden, excuse me, uh, have indicated that it would be great if uh, the Ukrainians could use any of the arms that they can get from any of the NATO countries, and there are 32 of those countries, including the U.S., which basically is the ruler of those NATO countries, and that we could that they could send bombs, nuclear tip bombs, and they could send uh, they could send the top. Uh, top-rated missiles into Russian cities. Already there have been bombs that have gone off into uh, commercial areas and civilian areas into Russian areas. Right now, um, Volodymyr Zelensky is no longer constitutionally president, but he canceled elections in Ukraine, so you cannot have an election. He has shut down 14 opposition parties. He has imprisoned his number one opposition leader. He has shut down five out of the six media companies. Uh, he has also closed churches. 
and he doesn't want to go anywhere. He is known to be a very corrupt leader, much like many of the previous uh, Ukrainian leaders. I am Ukrainian. I do not accept this leadership that is in Ukraine. It is a violent fascist group. It is anti-Semitic in 2019. Israel came out with a study that showed that Ukraine was the most anti-Semitic country in Europe. Uh, so uh, it, they are also anti-LGBTQ. They are, they are anti-Tartar. They are anti-Roma. They are anti-Russian. And they are violent. And this is the group that the U.S. got with uh, 10 years ago when they sponsored the coup in Ukraine and overthrew the president. And this was McCain and Newland and Lindsey Graham and Joe Biden. But Obama said, I don't want to get involved in Ukraine and cause World War III. And he was right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to address this topic or have a comment during this time? Welcome. Please state your name and city you're from. Howdy. My name is uh, Trent Grierson. I am a resident of Iowa City and a uh, bartender here as well. And I'm uh, here to discuss a topic not on the agenda uh, this evening. It's about the uh, price increase for parking. Uh, I understand that my grievance may come to uh, too little too late, but I feel that they must be aired on behalf of the backbone of this community. Uh, adequate and affordable parking is a necessity for a successful service industry. And you know, forget the impact of price hike on our customers. I had an ankle surgery back in January, and a contemporary of mine had a hip surgery last year, which precludes us from walking to and from work. Uh, we, we would love to take the bus system, which is now free. Thank you very much, guys. But they stop running at 10 p.m. I do not get off work until 3 o'clock in the morning. That yeah, becomes a little difficult. Uh, Moving along, so uh, the only option here now is parking. The increase would uh, mean a substantial uh, overhead increase for individuals already living on the margin. Yesterday, I made $65 in cash tips. After nine hours of being parked in the ramp, if you increase the prices, that's going to be $16. That will be a quarter of my cash tips from that, uh, from that shift. Other cities, such as Cedar Rapids, uh, which is nearly twice our size, only uh, charges uh, 75 cents an hour and uh, uh, in the ramp and $1.25 an hour for street parking. So uh, other options that we could pursue instead of this immediate price hike would be uh, uh, we could do a incremental adjustment of a quarter a year in order to get us up to your expected budget. Uh, we could also extend tr uh, transit service hours so that we're not uh, completely relying upon parking. Otherwise, we could offer permits to downtown employees. Thank you very much, members of the council. Thank you. I will have you sign in right there. Thank you so much. Anyone else like to address this topic or address a topic that is not on our agenda? Seeing no one in person or online. I'm going to close that part of our agenda. We're going to move on to our regular formal agenda, which is we'll start with item 9A. This is the 2024 water pavement patching project, resolution approving project manual and an estimate of cost for the construction of the 2024 water pavement patching project. Establish an amount of bid security to accompany each bid, directing city clerk to post notice to bidders, and fixing time and place for receipt of bids. I'm going to open the public hearing and welcome. Hi, thank you. Uh, I'm Mari Van Dyke. I'm with the engineering division. Uh, so this is an annual maintenance project where we repair pavement that was damaged from water main breaks. Uh, so the types of pro uh, pavement that we repair include sidewalk, driveways, uh, concrete street, asphalt street, like kind of any combination of those. Uh, these pictures show kind of what the sites look like once the water division is finished with their water main repair. So they'll put back either rock or uh, temporary <clears throat> asphalt. Um, so I guess with this project, we combine the permanent repair of all the locations into one project. So currently there are 28 locations in need of repair. And then as new water main breaks happen throughout the rest of the year, those will be added to this contract as well. Uh, so we estimate that about 15 to 20 locations will be added to the project by the end of the year. So the estimated construction cost is $320,000. That's for just the 28 starting locations. Then for schedule, we'll open bids June 25th, 
award the contract July 16th, and then construction would go from July to November this year. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you much. <laughs> Anyone from the public like to address this topic? Seeing no one in person or online, I'm going to close the public hearing. Can I get a motion to approve, please? So moved, Burgess. Second, Harmson. Moved by Burgess, seconded by Harmson. Um, we know that one counselor left, so we're going to uh, we'll open it up for council discussion at this point. But before roll call, we will wait. I was going to ask, actually, um, just as a point of reminder, with the permanent patching, or so-called, that's sort of, that basically, it extends the life of the existing road until we get to a point where it's like, it has to be completely reconstructed. So this is, I mean, it's definitely extending the life of the road, correct? So uh, in a sense, the main goal of this project is, like, really what's out there is, is like an emergency repair. Right, okay. yeah. And yeah. so we're just kind of fixing that to ex the existing conditions that were there before gotcha. um, the water main break happened. Gotcha, yeah. And I'm sorry, it's like, yes, I saw the pictures of everything. No, it's okay. <laughs> it's like I had a different thought to yeah. like keep mm. things humming along. Also, I have a lot of different annual maintenance projects, yeah. so they kind yeah. of blur together. Yeah, but no, the pictures explained it all. That's did your, thank you. No but problem. all of these are not temporary fixes. I mean, it could be so I guess what the city staff has put back immediately after they fixed the water main break mm -hmm. is temporary until we go back with this project to permanently repair it. Got it. Yeah, it's no fun to have a water main break. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? I will say it is fun to get calls from people and be able to answer their questions because yes. Jeff sends out good timely emails on Fridays. Yes. I've had that happen multiple times where people have, have called me and said, why the hell don't I have water? And I'm like, well, thank God I got this message. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. So thank you. Great. All right. 
So continue with council discussion on item number 9A. Any other discussion by council? Hearing none, roll call please. Teague? Yes. Alter? Yes. Burgess? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Harmson? Yes. Saleh? Yes. Motion passes six to zero. Nine B is transit funding application. Resolution authorizing the filing of an application with the Iowa Department of Transportation for fiscal year 2025, state transit assistance and federal transit administration funding. I'm gonna open the public hearing and I'm gonna welcome uh, Darian Nagel-Gam. Welcome. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. Darian Nagel-Gam, I'm the Director of Transportation Services with the City. The item before you tonight is our Consolidated Transit Funding Application, which is an annual application that we file with the Iowa DOT, the Department of Transportation, listing our capital and operating expenses for which the city seeks funding from the DOT and from the Federal Transit Administration. The projects contained in this application have been programmed by Iowa City Transit for Federal Transit Administration Section 5307, 5310, 5339 funds in the year fiscal year FY, the upcoming fiscal year FY25. The projects will be included in the FY25 Iowa DOT Consolidated Transit Funding Application that the MPO of Johnson County or the Metropolitan Planning Organization of Johnson County is completing, and also in the FY25 through 28 MPO JC Transportation Improvement Program. So Iowa City Transit may not seek funding for all the projects we have listed in our program of projects tonight. However, each project needs to be listed in order to qualify for, or to be eligible for federal funding. Um, I, the four categories of funding that we are requesting funding for um, are as follows. Number one is our state transit assistance program and we are requesting over $694,000 in funding and these are operational fundings that are awarded to MPO JC and then distributed to Iowa City Transit, Coralville Transit, and the University of Iowa Canvas. The second category of funding is federal operating assistance for transit, and that's approximately $3.1 million this year, mostly used for salaries, salaries and wages of our transit staff. And they are, these funds are awarded from the FTA to provide, again, operational assistance for our agency. The third category of funding is federal funds for transit serving primarily elderly persons and persons with disability. This is um, categorized as 5310 funding um, in federal parlance, and this is approximately $200,000, and this will go to help support our SEATS paratransit contract and our SEATS paratransit service that we contract through Johnson County. And last but not least is the statewide federal capital assistance for transit. This is 5339 funding. Um, this is over $34 million. Um, as you might imagine, this contains the funding from which um, we, will, uh, we will be constructing a new transit facility. Um, it also includes funding for new um, expanded fleet of uh, electric buses, electric bus replacements, future paratransit vehicles that we need to replace when our fleet ages out of production, um, spare parts and the like. So this is really kind of our wish list of all the things um, that we would like to see funded. Of course, we've already received word um, federally that we've received grant funding for the new facility. That's the 19 plus million dollar grant. But uh, until those funds are actually drawn down, they like to see these um, in our formal request. So you will likely see these for the next few years as we are designing and constructing the transit facility. Um, until that grant is, is ultimately closed out. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have today. Thanks for uh, bringing this before us. The one question I have, I know that we have 28E agreement as stated here with Johnson County for seats. Um, and then of course we have the MPO. How, explain a little bit more about this application. Um, why is the MPO listed in here where we're asking for funding for other communities? It's a great question. So federally, uh, the the designation there's a designated metropolitan planning excuse me metropolitan planning organization um, in every metropolitan area that is a recipient of federal transportation funds, and they're responsible both for receiving those funds and for planning and programming those funds. So they sort of act as the overseer for any federal transportation funds that we receive 
receive. So they receive the funds and then through the metropolitan planning process, those funds are then distributed to the member entities. So the MPOJC board ultimately makes the decision about how much of that total funding we receive federally that comes to the metro area gets allocated to Iowa City, to Coralville, and to Canvas. So that's their role. They're kind of, uh, they're, they or oversee the distribution of federal funds on behalf of the federal government. And we are the ones that kind of apply to the state for this and the other communities are not. They will also. So, so they'll also have yes. it in theirs. Okay, thank yes, you. Yes, you bet. That's a good point of clarification. So Coralville will also be going through the similar process. Great. Um, and the university um, will, would go through a similar process for, for their federal funds. Thank you. Yeah. Hearing no more questions, thanks. Anyone from the public like to address this topic? Say no one in person or online. I'm going to close the public hearing. Could I get a motion to approve, please? So moved. All set. Second, Harmson. Moved by Alter, seconded by Harmson. Council discussion. Roll call, please. Alter? Yes. Burgess? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Harmson? Yes. Saleh? Yes. Teague? Yes. Motion passes six to zero. 9C is amendment to Title VIII, Chapter 7, add in section prohib uh, prohibition, throwing and shooting projectiles. Ordinance amending Title VIII entitled Police Regulations Chapter 7 entitled Weapons to add a new section prohibiting throwing and shooting projectiles into or on public ways and property. I'm going to open the public hearing and welcome Chief. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. <clears throat> Dustin Liston, Chief of Police. Um, we talked about this last year, if you guys remember. Um, we, have a, we have an ongoing problem in the community with um, many of our youth and adults using typically what the name brand is an Orbeez gun. There's other brands, but what, what they do is they shoot um, projectiles that have either water or um, these water or gel filled beads, and they run around and play games and shoot one another with it. But what we've the thing that's concerning is now they're starting to shoot at unsuspecting people, not willing participants. Um, we had an issue last year that uh, the mayor, you, you took charge and led a CBI meeting um, that was very successful. The, the challenge we face now is last year was kind of a confined group of people that we knew who they were. It's a much bigger problem this year. Um, so far this year, we've had over 60 calls for service related to these guns. Mm -hmm. And in the last two months, we've had over 30. Um, if you remember last year, we had an incident where uh, we had someone who was, most of these guns look very toyish. They're wild colors, but occasionally we'll have instances where people, for whatever reason, modify them to look real. And that's what I'm really afraid of, especially, you know, we, we had the proclamation today on gun violence. I would hate to see a tragedy happen when someone mistakes one of these guns for a real gun. Um, that's the thing I'm worried about. And without this ordinance change, we, we really don't have anything to do, any enforcement action we can take. Um, unless they commit other crimes. And recently we've had cases where we've had to charge people with assault, with disorderly conduct, and we'd really like to get ahead of it and work on prevention. If we have this tool, we can talk to the people. We always start with um, education first. Um, and if that doesn't work, then we have this, uh, this ordinance change that would allow us to write a citation, which would be a $50 fine. It would be no different than a seatbelt ticket. And just like with seatbelt or speeding, we try to get ahead of the bigger problems, and that's what we would try to do here. Um, like I said, some of the problems we've been seeing, if it's, if it's a group of kids in a park that are playing with one another, that's a perfect opportunity for education. That's where we talk to them, let them know that, that if the ordinance changed, that, that we can't do that in public places. Um, and if that doesn't work, then we could we could we would have the option to seize the guns, and we could have the option of writing a citation. But as you know, we usually we always lead with uh, education first. So I'm happy to take any questions. Um, last year, the CBI we're willing to do the CBI again. I think we should, but we need to identify a distinct group of people. The groups we've had have ranged from all over different different sides of the community. It wasn't, last year was a very small group and we were able to make uh, a lot of progress with just dealing with those people and it pretty much solved the problem and now the problem is back with a larger group of people. Was it CPI? 
Yes. Oh. What is the CBI? Oh, uh, Community Violence Intervention. Uh, okay. Jess Lang was here. She represents part of that group. The mayor had a, a group of people. I think some other of you may have all participated in, in it. We knew a lot of the people that I think that was the night maybe it, it's it uh, the genesis of that was an event. I think it happened during the the uh, Juneteenth. Juneteenth and at Redmond got in the crossfire too. So, um, but that that was very helpful. And I have a meeting on Thursday with the uh, county attorney, and we're going to be discussing options for identifying more people to have those meetings with again. I guess the question I have is is how and I'm not a lawyer, of course. Mm -hmm. but how is it not assault to just shoot random people? It, it can be, okay. and, and, and we have charged people with assault. What we'd like to do is intervene before that happens. So oh. this year we have charged people with assault. One of the things we've noticed, some of them kind of maliciously freezing the the beads oh. to make it hurt a little worse, um, and that's where you know they they can produce injuries, welts, and sometimes they can break the skin, and sure. and then that obviously is assault. Yeah. Okay. But the question is, you mean like they intentionally shooting like stranger? Yes. Or they they just like was playing and some of the they shoot somebody else like coming across or something like that. We've we've seen both. What we've seen is people doing like drive bys with cars and just shooting randomly at strangers and videotaping it. There's some nationwide trends where people are using social media to videotape these events um, and that's what we kind of see at the end of the school year I, I think that's what the timing seems to be both last year and this year is uh, kind of uh, fueled by social media mm. but when you say like you cannot do this in public like for example if a group of kids they playing this game together and they went to like uh, a park and there is no one in that park uh, like in certain time and they mm -hmm. just was doing it they are among themselves, is that also like will become illegal? Yes. The the, the ordinance. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say the ordinance does have a carve out if there's some event that with the city manager's written approval they could do that. Um, again, we have had instances where it was just a group of friends and we go and tell them like, hey. Right now, it's not against against city ordinance, so we really don't have any teeth to that. We remind them that it, it can become a problem. It's just dangerous to do. This isn't something that people should be doing in public anyhow because of the some of these do look like real guns, and we would hate for a tragedy to happen. Um, yeah. If somebody said maybe also, if I saw a gun, I will just have a heart attack, even if it's not a real gun. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, some people, they just don't like that. So. Mm -hmm. So I just want to clarify what's currently on the books and what this would change. So it's currently unlawful already and is a simple misdemeanor in our in our code for um, carrying any toy pistol, toy gun, or other toy arms or slingshot out of or by which any leaden or other dangerous missiles can be discharged. Okay, so I I think... My primary concern with this ordinance, two things. One is it's very broad because it's it's much beyond just the the toy guns and the Orbeez and that concern. I saw in the memo introducing it that there was some concern about water balloons as well. Um, but I think having this would criminalize like literally skipping stones at Terry Trueblood. This would criminalize throwing a rock onto a sidewalk as it's written. And I think if we're going to be implementing, if we're going to criminalize acts in our community, it sh needs to be very narrowly tailored to address specific behavior. Otherwise, we have a situation where there can be discretion to say, well, these kids playing in the park, they're not hurting anyone, but if a particular officer has an issue with, you know, one of those kids or something like that, they can then be charged with a crime instead of addressing the outcome of the behavior, which I think we already have protections in place um, for that. In general, I am not in favor of criminalizing additional uh, activities in our community. I think it's really important that we get to the root, and I appreciate you saying you want to provide education and prevention. I don't think a citation after the fact for $50 and a you know misdemeanor 
on someone's record is going to deter that behavior. I don't, I think it really is about social media and peer pressure and those kinds of things, not about what, you know, I don't believe in this instance that this is a tool in the toolbox that will actually address the issue. And if we need to, based on things looking like guns, you know, a, those Orbeez guns are definitely capable of discharging a dangerous missile if they're frozen, for example. The code just says uh, from which may be discharged. So you don't even have to have discharged it. If it's capable of doing that, it's already unlawful. So I, I just think if, if the true intent is to capture those particular issues, we have tools already to do it. But in general, I don't think that, you know, having something that, that criminalizes you know, if I'm changing out the pavers in my front walkway and I throw a brick and it lands in the right of way under this ordinance, that could be a crime unless Jeff Ruin has given me permission in advance. What is that? Where are you seeing Where that, you Counselor? That from the I'm ordinance I'm itself. Reading, I'm reading the ordinance also. Uh, it is unlawful for a person to throw stones, bricks, or missiles of any kind, or to shoot other dangerous instruments or toys, or on or into any street, alley, highway, sidewalk, public way, public ground, or public building without written consent of the city manager. That's it is the act of throwing onto a public way of stones, bricks, or missiles of any kind. I, I want to make sure that we're, we are giving um, questions at this point because we'll be I'm come sorry, back Mary. we'll be able to come back and do deliberations but so I thought you I just, were I thought you were getting then, to a question my question is was was my reading of the code as written correct that it could be enforced that way understanding that maybe wasn't the intent based on the memo yeah I'll, I'll open with agreement uh, I'm certain that you're right it was not the intent to um, you know have uh, tossing a brick onto the parkway or something uh, to be a, a criminal event um, in response to your <clears throat> uh, question about uh, the current toy gun and slingshot ordinance, um, that requires a dangerous missile. And uh, whereas we've concluded that a BB gun would apply, our conclusion when this issue was first raised uh, some time ago was that that would not apply to Orbeez guns with the gel pellets, probably whether they're frozen or not. And that's why it was decided we would need something more. Uh, and that's how we got to this ordinance here. We, uh, if memory serves, largely mirrored um, ordinances that were already in place in neighboring communities uh, such as Coralville and, and North Liberty and used theirs as a model. So I guess my question is, if, if our only concern was with the language for dangerous missile, why couldn't we say like, or gel pellet? If we're being very specific about our issue, it would seem, if, if, if this is a, if everyone's on the same page here, it would seem that that would achieve the same goal without some of the downsides. Yeah, of course, it wouldn't address the water balloon um, part to that. Uh, we could add that, too. <laughs> well, <laughs> well we, we want to be careful about trying to uh, Hydrated make an exhaustive list <laughs> yeah. because uh, I wouldn't have thought of water balloons uh, yeah. being thrown from cars driving down the highway, um, nor would I have thought of Orbeez guns until a year ago or so. Uh, but aren't we creating a list with the new ordinance? Well, it, it's still broad. I mean, I get what you're saying insofar as it lists stones, bricks, or missiles, but it ends with, you know, of any kind, missiles being a projectile. So um, a water balloon is a missile, but a no. frozen Orbeez pellet is not a dangerous missile. Uh, I would agree that a water balloon probably, I'm sorry, is that what you said is not yeah. a... You, so under this, under the proposed ordinance, yeah. a water balloon is a missile. Yeah. But under the current ordinance, a frozen Orbeez uh, pellet is not a dangerous missile. We think we would have a hard time proving that up, yes. I think you might have a hard time with a water balloon being a missile also, but I, well, I, my, my overall objection is, yeah. sorry. I, I take your point about your, you know, whether it's written too broadly, you know, that's a reasonable point. And is this going to be like, why are we saying this ordinance will impose a crime of penalty? Like, can we just give people, if they did that, without making it a crime, like give them a ticket, a warning, without like calling it a crime, and just do everything as it is, but not call it a crime. 
Well, we couldn't issue a warning for a non-crime. Is, is that what you were suggesting? Certainly, a they fine. could be counseling. Well, civil like penalty. A fine, a ticket, like or anything. Oh, like a civil penalty or yes, something. Yes, a is civil penalty, kind of. Oh. Uh, well, we could certainly do that, but that would be a municipal infraction, and that's not something our officers you know, can dole out on the spot. That's more, there's junk in your yard, um, you know, your grass is too high. Uh, it's something that has a much uh, lengthier process and requires us to file, uh, mm. uh, you know, something and pay a filing fee up front and so forth. It, it's not the kind of um, agile response that officers need, you know, in the moment to resolve a problem. So... It Oh, oh, just a question for the chief. Is there, from a legal standpoint, do you feel like your officers are empowered to do that educational component, whether they're, you know, li like currently, like right now, do they go and talk to kids who are harming people or who are acting in ways that they believe are about to harm people? Is there anything preventing them from saying, hey, knock it off, it looks like you're going to hurt someone? There's nothing preventing them, but there is something preventing them, us from seizing those guns. And that, that's, we would also like to do that because if we see someone shooting at someone in public, if they don't hit them, and if they, or even if they do hit them and it doesn't cause an injury, that's not, there's nothing wrong with that. And we can, but they can't, they there's can't, nothing we can do. But they can't carry them according to current ordinance. No, they can. They can carry them. It, the, under the current ordinance, they could carry these because, again, it's not a or these guns missile. are not, yeah. Well, it says carrying prohibited. It shall be unlawful for any person to possess or carry any, t they can't carry it. I don't know. Would the city attorney's office entertain uh, a, an interpretation of the word may be discharged to understand that you could put something in an Orbeez gun that looks like a real gun that then is a dangerous missile? It seems to me that that's, that's where you would get that. Right, I, I understand the point you're making. I'm just, and and uh, I'm not sure whether I would entertain that is what's important. It's whether a magistrate would dismiss it uh, is what I'm concerned about. <clears throat> I mean, there's been some case law about um, BB guns, and there have been many who have proffered a defense and saying, hey, the BB is not a dangerous missile and so forth. Ultimately, there's been some case law, not a lot, but some case law that says, yeah, that is, Obviously, we've had a, a tragedy in our own community um, a couple years ago, I believe, mm -hmm. um, where that you know hazard was made evident. But um, those defenses have been proffered. I'm fearful that if we were to try to prosecute someone even with frozen Orbeez, that there would be a, a pretty good defense in their part saying, "Hey, it's a gel, you know, thing sold, you know, in toy stores, et cetera," and that we would. I'm not sure we would prevail on that. I'm confused. Sure. Tell me more. I still don't understand how, as the war, the the current ordinance is written, not the one that we're we're understanding. I'm confused as to how our law enforcement officers are seeing something that says carrying prohibited, and we're allowing it to happen, like. Uh, is there a, a disconnect there, or like what's? It's the definition of a dangerous missile yeah. or projectile. So they can't carry a BB gun, for example, under our. It, just carrying a BB gun would be illegal, but that's because it is interpreted as being capable of firing a dangerous missile. This covers Orbeez guns uh, and other things that you could throw, uh, and, and doesn't require it to be a dangerous missile. Okay. It can be just something that's harmful. So if we amended that to be more specific, I mean, which issue, version? Sorry, the the current current language, not proposed. Okay. To Go be on. more specific to the issue that we're dealing with, would we be able to address the problem? Would we be able to seize them if they were in the in public, and or shooting other people? Would we be able to do what the police department is hoping to do? Well, if, it depends on the amendment. <clears throat> if you're saying, could we amend the present ordinance in such a way as to incorporate Orbeez guns? Correct. Um, then yes. You know, uh, I'm not sure how we would phrase that, but if we would largely probably be taking language from the ordinance proposed before you um, and amending the current ordinance uh, in such a way to make sure we're inclusive, then that would address the police's concern about their ability to seize the guns um, if they see folks firing off and, and, and so forth. Um, that would not address the throwing other objects. But again, if you 
wanted to amend the current ordinance in such a way as to include the throwing too, then, is, know, then is, we're is, probably is, right back to this is, ordinance. But. Is something that's thrown a projectile? Yes. Okay. Could, could we not just say like toy guns, slingshots, and projectiles? Change that part and then you know, we could literally say hydrated projectiles. <laughs> like, it's, I'm serious. I understand what you're saying. And presumably that would address, well, I mean, we could write it in such a way as to ensure that we're addressing Orbeez guns. So I, th I think that's your point. And yeah. without including, let's say, Nerf guns. Yeah. Um, sure, that could probably be done. But again, I don't know what else police officers have encountered being thrown. Again, water balloons is one of the uh, yeah. things that uh, apparently has been happening. I, I guess I can't speak for the police as to what other objects they've seen thrown, but our, our view was that we you know, looked at what neighboring communities have done, have that worked for them? The answer we got was yes. And so we kind of figured we would go with what. I, I guess my final question before I, I yeah. continue beating a dead horse. Um, <laughs> would we achieve similar effect, if not, or equivalent effect, by amending the, what, what already exists in that way that we've been discussing rather than adopting what has already been? Well, would, would, our, would our law enforcement officers be able to achieve what they want to achieve and what we want them to achieve? Because I do want them to achieve this. If we were to amend the present ordinance in such a way as to be essentially inclusive of everything that's being offered? Not everything. Well, okay. Which yeah. parts would you want to Specifically, we're talking about the Orbeez, the water balloons. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Could we amend the present ordinance such as, or to include Orbeez and water balloons, but not the stones, bricks, or missiles? Um, we could. We could do that. And yes. that would achieve what our law enforcement officers Well, I'll let the chief answer That's that. what I'm wondering, yeah. Yes, I'd, yep. Okay. Any other questions? We'll certainly have time to deliberate. <clears throat> My question is just really basic. <clears throat> have there been problems with water balloons? There have. Okay. N not, it's not near to the extent of the um, Orbeez situation, but yes, around the same time last year that we were dealing with, we had some, some people driving around throwing water balloons into other cars. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hearing no other questions at this time, would anyone from the public like to address this topic? If you're online, please raise your virtual hand, and, and if you're in person, please step to the mic. Seeing no one in person or online, I'm gonna close the public hearing, and uh, can I get a motion to give first consideration? So moved. Moved by Dunn. Second. Second by Alter. Council discussion. So let me ask a question. Let me jump right in because it yeah, actually responds to sort of the, the back and forth thing. Um, and I apologize because I have a cough drop. So if I sound mushy, um, <laughs> I apologize. So my question is this, is that what is, because I, and it's a genuine question, I really do not know. What is the benefit of simply amending an ordinance versus adding another one? And I just, I ask that, I guess I should, I guess I, I, I want to know both from a, a legal perspective, what is, is there a distinction or a benefit to having a separate new ordinance as opposed to amending it? And then from sort of the, the council perspective, the same question. May I respond briefly? I wanted to ask him. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The, <laughs> the, the only thing that I think is that there, there's a difference in the breadth. That's, that's the only thing that I see in the, in, in the difference. So there's no real distinction. It's just sort of the, well, it's, the, 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 I don't know. Well, yeah. So I mean like. The elegance of having it in one. It's, it's addressing, it's whether we're, as I understand, addressing the existing problem as we see it like precisely, which I think we all, I would hope that we all want to do, um, versus I do think this would make it a finable offense to skip rocks. Like, like, you know, I, and I'm very concerned about that. I don't think anyone wants that, even if it is not the intent, it is the letter of the law mm -hmm. would be here. And so my concern is with that, the, the breadth of what we are doing with this. I have no problem if we were to create an additional one, but it does seem like we have, as Councilor Burgess mentioned, we already have a tool and we can make a very small, precise change to address the problem that this 
is trying to address. Okay. In that case, kind of following up a further question, um, the skipping stones versus uh, causing, you know, having an Orbeez fight. Um, is there, and this maybe is a question for Eric, um, if the proposed amendment here were to say something uh, indicative of in the, in the act of creating a public danger or public nuisance? Um, you know what I mean? Adding a phrase in this, um, you know, this, uh, this um, proposed uh, a more, somewhere in the it is unlawful for a person, dot, 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 uh, without written consent of the city manager, to add something about public nuisance being, because I think that's kind of the difference, right? I mean, somebody throwing a paver, somebody, you know, that's as opposed to, you know, what we've seen, which, which, is, a, which is a concern. I am very concerned about that and, and what that could lead to, so. I, I guess my hesitancy about that would be the uh, argument that what constitutes a, a danger or a nuisance, mm -hmm. I think it's a word you use, uh, might be difficult to prove and any ambiguities would be interpreted uh, to the benefit of the defendant and I imagine we might lose a lot of cases like that. Um, the only other difference I see is, again, if the present ordinance, which is 8-7-3, toy guns and slingshots, as long as, I mean, we've got carrying and so forth here. Now, presently, carrying an Orbeez gun is not illegal. And, and so uh, I want to um, understand what it is. I mean, well, I guess I shouldn't presume mm -hmm. because it's council's decision about what they want to do here. Uh, but, um, well, yeah, so I, I guess in answer to your question, Councilor Harmson, I, I would be hesitant to adopt such a standard because I think it might okay. be problematic. Cause a different problem. Yeah. Gotcha. So I, I, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I, I have one question maybe just to add to this, um, because I do understand um, that this is generalized, so thanks for, you know, it's too general, and it can be inclusive of a lot of stuff. I also just want to put out there that, you know, we see water guns here, but I can tell you that some of that is not water. <laughs> so it is bleach. <laughs> you know, it's so... How do, I, I think a part of the discussion is, how do we know what the next thing is that's gonna come, come out, and how do we capture that? But I do understand, you know, the concern, absolutely, without a doubt. You know, the skipping of the rocks and all that other stuff, I don't think that's what we're really wanting to, you know, penalize here or, or, or go into, although there is already an avenue for that if someone is assault, right? If, 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 that's, the, if that's the issue. Um, but I just wanted to add that to the conversation. I won't be belabor it. The other thing I will just mention um, is, you know, the, the BB gun uh, that um, our city attorney mentioned, that was an event that happened right over there near um, you know, Sycamore Street and the highway, yeah. where someone was out there innocently, well, while they were shooting in their backyard, um, I think rabbits or something like that. Yeah. Squirrels. Squirrels. Yeah, squirrels. And, and, you know, it actually, the, you know, the person sitting in the car, their window was down far enough where they had, you know, terrible uh, instant, um, you know, effect from that. So, I just want to bring that out there as well. The other thing that I will say in light of, um, you know, the work that was done last year, um, this happened during Juneteenth where we realized that we have been getting complaints at, at, to the council level about the Orbeez guns prior to June 19th. We heard it happen in downtown through um, some of the parks um, as well as through the, um, the old Capitol Center uh, where, you know, people are using these guns. We also, so we brought individuals here to City Hall, the individuals that we knew. Um, we had a great conversation with them. There was also a video that showed um, um, a bunch of kids down in front of uh, the mall downtown, I still call it the old Capitol Mall, um, in downtown, and they were hanging out, and then there was a car coming. Um, it was actually northbound on Clinton Street, and there was a, you know they were shooting at this uh, at this at this van, and the kids were running into the street. Cars coming south. Um, it was 
and it, you know, it was very, very dangerous. Um, that vehicle that was heading north got in the opposite lane and made a left going where the, where the buses go. So this is a problem within the community. The good thing is that we had the, you know, the conversation, the educational piece. We did some, a presentation that kind of showed these kids, like, you know, the, the concerns um, uh, about these. July 4th, we had, you know, because the July 4th was coming, uh, and after we had this opportunity to talk to them, we had zero, I believe, uh, instances that we heard of um, July 4th, because we were worried. These kids were ramped up. So education does work, and I think that if we, whatever we create, I think the education can still be there. But if kids have these, you know, devices, they are probably not going to stop unless there are, there's something that kind of, you know, sends the message home, not only to themselves, but also to their peers and their parents. I just think fundamentally we have to decide what we want to be a crime and what we don't. And what's in front of us tonight would criminalize all kinds of conduct that we all seem to agree we don't want to criminalize. And our city attorney said very clearly he doesn't want to add something like it needs to be dangerous because we might have a problem proving that. I have no interest in criminalizing activities that aren't even arguably dangerous. I, I don't think that is the role of the city, particularly when we're talking about our armed officers enforcing these infractions. I, 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 I really agree. I did not see criminal penalties at all until you grabbed that to my attention. And I think that the way that you explain it, since I, you have experience and you are a lawyer, so you know you can read like in the fine line. So I really wouldn't anticipate it that like we're gonna make it criminal penalty. I just thought, look at the fifty dollars. Oh, it's not bad and. Uh, for like this, but I really would like, as the mayor said, education work. I will just, if the education couldn't work, then let us do education instead of making it criminal. And also, if the, um, if we can figure out, use it like any tools in, the, in our toolbox, and just figure out another way of uh, like giving ticket or make it violations without making it criminal. Uh, you know, I will do that, but. I am not interested of voting something that will just add a lot better than what we have in this community. And what I was going to oh, go ahead. I, I just want to put this out there because it really does um, kind of add another <laughs> element to what Mayor Pro Tem just stated. My question is: um, Is there a way where there is a kind of a stepping stone mm -hmm. where you know the warning is there, then there is. Um, you know, first is the warning, then there is like, you know, $50 fine, and then, if, you know, the third time, you know, there is that, you know, that criminal um, mm. option. So I put it out there. I don't know all the ins and outs, but I just wanted to put it out there. I mean, how does that work with, I mean, if we have a fine, it's technically a, I mean, you can't find somebody for doing something that's not against something. Well, right, it, it, again, if you're gonna, make people pay a fine is either a civil penalty or a criminal fine. And so obviously if you're looking to impose a criminal fine, you need a crime. If it's a civil penalty, then we again would likely be issuing a municipal infraction. As I mentioned before, that's just not a, a very practical uh, answer uh, for the police. We've been approached in the past about trying to convert some crimes into municipal infractions. And I think the only one we've actually done so is disorderly house for allowed parties. And that was more in a response to <clears throat> what we do when officers go to uh, a location and knock on the door to try to just educate the public and say, hey, can you turn it down and so forth, but they don't answer and keep the music back and no one will come to the door. Well, we needed a, a civil remedy for that. And so we did um, uh, create a civil version of disorderly house. Uh, but again, it, there's a lot of work involved with, with going that route and we impose it on uh, the folks who have signed a lease 
there. And, and so there's, you can just imagine there's a, a lot of things that would distinguish that kind of circumstance from what you could do or what an officer could do on the street, um, you know, if he encounters something like that. I think if we had fun patrol, it would be people who could say, hey, kids, knock it off and I'm provide sure the education listen. and uh, sure would, would help solve the problem. So let, can I, can oh, I? Go ahead. I'm Please. sorry, I just want to hop in. I've just been sort of trying to make sense of this all. And I guess one of the things is that, in fact, I think that given the, the direction and the tenor of the council in, in previous discussions about public safety, that <coughs> the police force knows not to, or, and our legal department is not going to bring something to us without having considered a lot of ramifications. Like it's not just sort of like, let's slap together an ordinance and say, hey, here, pass it. Knowing very well that it's something that, in fact, this council is and has been talking about and really parsing this finely, and I think for absolutely all the right reasons. But I feel like in slicing and dicing and parsing the language of this, it's in some ways actually becoming oversimplified to say, well, if there's a paver, that's a crime. There's no interest in, and I agree, we don't want to um, criminalize something that's not dangerous, but I think the whole point of why this is before us is because in fact, there have been problems that are potentially dangerous, not simply for individuals who are innocents, so to speak, but those who are involved in it, it could become very dangerous for them as well. They're putting themselves into a situation where either they're playing around and horsing around and God forbid a, a traffic accident and then they're hurt or that a gun is mistaken and otherwise. So I guess I just want to sort of bring it back to like, it, at the same time that I think we are absolutely right to, to look at this with a fine, you know, a very fine lens on this. I also just want to say, realistically speaking, this council and this Iowa City Police Department and our mayor's office and et cetera, they're not just bringing something because they know we're going to rubber stamp this and that they think that this is just something that isn't needed. And I appreciate that we're having the conversation to say, is it needed or not? And we may decide it's not. But I think it's too fine a point to, or too broad of a point to say that the ordinance is here essentially to say, let's just put this through because we just don't like Orbeez. I think that there are real complexities and that there are the potential of danger, which is why it's before us. So I just wanted to raise that. I'm, I'm glad you did because that's actually so, um, yeah, last summer during one of the events we were talking about during a festival downtown, um, literally observe, watch this kind of all, all happen. And that's actually, which, so bear with me for just one second. Uh, there were uh, a group of kids, teenagers probably, um, which again, they're just teenagers, right? They're just kids and that's, that's an important part of this. Um, they're, they're screwing around, they're, they're playing with each other, but it's a crowded place. One of their, uh, you know, uh, crossfire uh, hit a little girl, she was like three years old, playing on the playground in the face and she started crying. Her dad was understandably upset, um, and he went, and I believe there was, I can't remember now if it was an officer there, or it might have even been um, uh, one of our county supervisors, that sort of intervened and calmed down the situation, um, uh, people that were there, and, 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 and de-escalated the situation successfully. But that could have gone a very different way. Um, you know, I know that if I was there, and, and being a dad, if all of a sudden my little girl gets hit in the eye, I don't know. I mean, that's, I, you know, we're lucky it didn't devolve into violence. Now you take that and you add it into the, the stark reality of our situation and Councilor Alter has got her orange shirt on for a reason today and I forgot mine, I'm sorry, I forgot what day it was. Um, because, so what if that dad is also maybe just a little bit aggressive and is packing heat because that's the state we live in, that's the country we live in. Now these kids who started with the Orbeez, who are just kids for goodness sakes, they're facing some really, really dangerous consequences. And that's the fear I have. So 
last summer I was really uh, happy the way that it all, it was a small enough group that that intervention, I think that was a classic example of, of, of what a good program that is, and it worked well. <laughs> what we're hearing is we've got it back, but we still have all those dangers out there. So I see this, when this came before us, I was like, oh, I'm so, so sad to see this. Uh, I really appreciate the, the, the concerns about, we wanna make something that's not over broad, but I'm not really ready to throw this out because it kind of sucks to have to criminalize this and criminalize what should be a fun kid activity. I think it would be, I mean, I, I grew up in rural Iowa where there actually were BB gun fights. I did not participate, but I did play football with a kid who lost his eye doing that. So, um, you know, I'm not really advocating that, but I mean, I grew up in a different time and place. Nerf guns, I've been the survivor of many a Nerf gun battle with my children. Um, these Orbeez things, and they're, they're really not meant to be harmful, and so I hate to like be that heavy-handed thing. At the same time, I think there might be something about giving a slap on the wrist so they don't find themselves in a much, much worse situation in our, because again, our society is not what it was when I was a kid. Uh, we didn't have the threats of gun violence. And so, do I think this is, this, this, does, does this make me happy? No. Am I thinking that it's unnecessary? I'm not sure that I think that. I think it might be necessary or something else like this so that there is something that we can, you know, impose that and stop this before it has a chance to escalate into something that won't involve an officer. In fact, I'm far less worried about officers being involved um, than somebody who's coming into our town who has decided they needed to carry a gun places, they get hit in the face, their kid gets hit in the face, and that anger starts to escalate. And then we've got blood on the ground, not just a $50 fine. So I mean, that's, that's my fear, and that's, that's where I'm kind of looking at this and approaching this from, is I think, yeah, the Orbeez themselves, they're annoying at worst, right? But what about the next, the next thing that happens? And so, so that's actually, that, you know, and there is an education component, and we already heard is that it? there's going to be an attempt to reach out. But we've also heard, too, that there are people from other communities coming here into our community and, and participating in this. What should be a harmless, silly prank, but maybe in today's world it's not. Isn't that a slippery slope fallacy, though? To say like, well, what about what does this lead to? That's not an. That's not. I a mean, real... I almost not come to blows. I don't know how slippery no, slope I, that is. No, I know, and I understand. But we're talking about like whether we take an action that is extraordinary, extraordinarily broad, right? I think we can all acknowledge that the the thing in front of us is extraordinarily broad in the way that it is written. I don't know about extraordinarily. I can understand the concerns that have been raised. I don't know that, I mean, I want to think about that some more. Is that fair? Yeah, oh, it's, it's totally fair. But I mean, I, 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 think, I think that this council wants to do something about this specific issue. Um, this, should, this should not be happening, right? Um, I, I think that we should have the ability to, you know, take these toy weapons out of people's hands and, and try to prevent these these types of situations. But I don't know that the way that this is worded is appropriate to do that, right? And, and we, we've, we've had just as much said, uh, both from our city attorney, um, that we can achieve the similar results with an amendment to the already existing language. Similarly, from our, our chief of police, they both said that if we amended it to... Um, uh, you know, the, the minor wording changes to, uh, what is the specific word? Dangerous missile, or, you know, we can just be more specific. We can address these specific changes and problems in our community rather than quite literally, as everyone up here, I think, acknowledges, technically criminalize skipping rocks. Like, my real concern is with how broad this is. We are not having problems right now with people skipping rocks. Or, or as far as I know, people even throwing rocks at each other. So why are they part of the issue if that's not something that we're experiencing? Additionally, throwing rocks is a major escalation than using like a toy gun. That's assault and battery. Clearly, that's already not allowed. You know, so like that's my concern. Like I want to do this the right way, and I just don't believe that this is the right way like I want to I want to be able to achieve what um, 
the, the chief of police is, is talking about, what Eric's intent in this language is, and I think as well as what, what your intent is, but I just don't like all of the other stuff, that, the baggage that comes with this. I think, it's, I think it's unwise. I guess the question for the council at this point is, um, is there support for what's before us now with some edits or um, what the councilor Don just mentioned, are we, um, is there interest at looking at the current ordinance and adding in um, maybe more specifics of addressing the issue that we have on hand? I think this actually goes back to, um, I would very much like to hear, is there a distinction? Is there a between amending an existing ordinance or having a new one that's addressing this? No, I don't think there's any legal distinction as to where the language is found, if it's found in a new ordinance or it's found in an amended version of 873, the present ordinance. I would just want to make sure I get some guidance from council about what you specifically want to achieve. Like, for example, with the toy guns and slingshots, again, referencing something capable of you know, firing a dangerous missile, mm -hmm. even carrying it is prohibited. Under the proposed ordinance, that is not prohibited for carrying an Orbeez gun. You could carry an Orbeez gun, but as soon as you start shooting it under those circumstances that are outlined, then that's on, then and only then is it illegal under the proposed ordinance. You have to carry it to shoot it. Sorry? You have to carry it to shoot it. Well, right, but I guess the distinction is if two people are walking down the street, one's carrying an Orbeez gun and one's carrying a, a BB gun, uh, if we were to pass a new version, yeah, I should say even if we were to pass a new version, we could stop the person with the BB gun, not the person with the Orbeez gun. So that doesn't seem to really help if we're trying to prevent these instances. Well, I, I think there's a distinction uh, between uh, BB guns and Orbeez guns is uh, short of it. The most significant of which is uh, BB guns look like firearms and often end in tragedy as a result of their looking like firearms. Um, and, uh, you know, they fire a dangerous missile. What is case law has uh, indicated is a dangerous missile. And again, I'm not sure that we could prove that up with an Orbeez gun. So right now it's illegal to carry a slingshot in Iowa City, correct? Correct. It, it, assuming it's a slingshot that's capable of discharging a dangerous missile. Yes. Which would be like any rock, correct? Fair. Okay. So I, I think the issue really needs to be about the danger and not about the act of throwing something onto some public way. The, the chief and the attorney are doing exactly what they are supposed to do by saying, well, let's just be as encompassing as we could possibly need to be because we don't know what's coming next. We don't know what's in the water gun. Like, that's what they're supposed to do. Our job is to say, what might be the ramifications of this down the road that we might not like and try and tailor it to the situation? I don't see why we need a new crime when it's already literally illegal to carry a slingshot in Iowa City. I, I also would say, like, in terms of the difference between an amendment to what we have before us versus an amendment to what we, we have um, already on the books, I don't think it would be germane to do at least what I have in my mind as an amendment to what we have before us in order to affect the change that we have on the books, if that makes sense. Well, if your amendment to the proposed ordinance is not germane to the proposed ordinance, then I would agree with you. Well, so like, so like basically what I've been describing, right? Could we theoretically, not saying we have the support for this because I have no idea, but theoretically, could we amend the ordinance in front of us to achieve the similar effect more, um, you know, surgical and amending the section that's already on the books rather than creating a new section. Can we do that in this meeting? Well, you can't amend the other, the present code section at this meeting uh, because we, we haven't noticed that up. Um, you can, of course, if it's the will of the council, you can provide guidance as to what you'd like to see mm -hmm. and we can bring it back. Uh, that's fine. You mean we postpone this or we vote on it or that we would I'm sorry? We have to like defer this or we vote for it tonight. Well if we want like to see like new language. 
Yeah, I mean, you've got a number of choices. You can uh, approve what you've got before you unaltered. You can amend uh, the uh, proposed ordinance in front of you. For example, if the concern is about skipping rocks and so forth, you could just eliminate the portion of the ordinance that makes reference to throw stones, bricks, or missiles of any kind, or instead just leaving in the language about <clears throat> shoot other dangerous instruments or toys on or into any street, et cetera, et cetera, if, if that's the nature of the council's concern. Or you can vote it down and uh, give direction to uh, me to come back with something that's consistent with what you would like to see effectuated, or you can vote it down and be done with the issue. And there is no way we can take the word criminal penalty. We cannot just say penalty. <laughs> I'm sorry, could you remove the part about criminal penalty? Uh -huh. Uh, if that's the will of the council, sure. I would want to know, you know what you want to do instead, because we can't just say it's illegal to do something and then have no punishment. I mean, we need to be doing something with it. Like some kind of penalty, yes. Oh, like the a civil penalty. penalty. Yeah, but it's not called criminal. Yeah, I'm, I'm not here to say you could not do that as a council. You could do it a municipal infraction, but I'm here to tell you that that would not be practical. It's interesting because I was actually, before before you had uh, said that, um, uh, I was just sitting here looking at this, thinking about, um, you know, that it really does seem like the crux of this, at least one of the, the crux, uh, cruxes, crux I, um, is about the, the throwing uh, portion of this. And if that is an issue that needs to be dealt with separately, um, but I think, uh, you know, uh, the striking that part and keeping the shoot other dangerous instruments or toys, that gets us at least the Orbeez part of it uh, moving forward. Um, and so uh, uh, I would make a motion to amend um, to strike through uh, uh, to throw stones, bricks, or missiles of any kind or strike those words. So then it would read, it is unlawful for a person to shoot other dangerous instruments or toys on or into any street, alley, highway, sidewalk, public way, public ground, or public building without written consent of the city manager. Could I offer a friendly amendment to remove the word other as well because that, w that word wouldn't then make any sense. Um, so as to read, it is unlawful for a person to shoot dangerous instruments or ah, toys, et cetera. Thank et cetera. you. I, I, I will uh, accept that, that as, as a friendly my, amendment. Okay. I, I will accept that. Well, I also say um, th remove throwing from that, the yeah, title yeah. section. Oh, did you remove that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just unlawful for a person to. Well, no. So I'm saying uh, in the title. Oh. In title. title. The title is throwing and shooting. It would not make sense to be throwing. Oh, if, if you did thank that. you. I was yeah. I, I hadn't yeah. gone way back to the top. Thank you for catching that. Yeah. Um, let me uh, say that I will make the amendment as suggested with the uh, addition with the city attorney, and to include any other cleaning up any other language within the ordinance that then would be necessary to change. Would that be an acceptable way to handle that? Uh, sure. So. So there's an amendment uh, proposal. Any comments? Can we add that? amendment to take the criminal penalty or change it to something else? I guess I would have questions so about. Separately, maybe. Yeah. I, I would have questions about are there ways to, uh, you know, have written those steps where we have, you know, the education. Yes. Um, then we, you know, after the education, maybe we, you know, go to that civil penalty. Yes, there, there is a great example of that. I think we could reference our, exactly, uh, the, the nuisance house ordinance, the party ordinance. The There's what? steps on that. Party ordin ordinance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That police come by one time, warning, second time. Yes. Well, would they be well, able to seize, uh, Chief, would you be able to seize the, or the guns? Well, the city attorney would better be able to address the oh. difference between civil and criminal, but we really don't enforce civil ordinance. Uh, it's a oh. it's a it's a process that they go through, um, and we enforce criminal law. So it would be a he'll be able to address. So, that like better. the law enforcement would only become involved if uh, once the stage gets to a simple misdemeanor. Well, or? right. In, in there's been some discussion about the um, disorderly house. Uh, I, I'm not aware that we've got codified, you know, that first visit's a warning, second visit's, you know, 
uh, escalating fines. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not aware that that's the way. We have escalating uh, fines in there. I'm sorry. There's escalating, escalating fines in there. Escalating. Are you fines. talking about the civil part or the criminal part? I, I think it both. Well, it might be. It's been a while. So I haven't prosecuted in a while. I know that that's true in the civil part. I'd yeah. have to check on the on the criminal part. Okay. But I'm I'm pretty. Sh well, is there? Do you know there's? Well, I should just pull it up. But in answer to your general question, could that be done? Yes. Uh, there are a number of crimes where there's a, a required warning. Uh, up front, obviously, that makes it incumbent on the officers to, you know, document every time they're warning someone, so that if they do it again, the next officer, presumably, it would be a different officer who encounters that individual, would know that they've previously been warned, and so okay, now, you know, the escalated penalty is present. So, in answer to your question, yes, uh, we could set up a scheme that way. I, I would want to make sure that that's a, a separate motion to amend. And, mm -hmm. Right now, we've got one motion to amend without a second yet, and I'd but, like to focus on that before we go anywhere else. Oh, I, I thought we just want to like make all the amendment well, together. Uh, and it, it, those seem unrelated. I mean, they're related in the sense that they're all related to this ordinance, of course, but um, it, that seems distinct enough that I think that would be best addressed through a separate motion to amend. Which you can do immediately after, you know, this this motion is resolved. I'll second for amending, but I don't want to cut off if, if there's still a desire to talk about it as. I mean, I think mm -hmm. I made a motion to amend that was specific, and yeah. that's that's yeah. We so, deal with that first. So moved okay. by Harmson, seconded by Alter. Continue discussion. I just feel like for me, I strongly, I just wanna, I don't wanna make this. So criminal by any means and I'm thinking I, I really don't know what the language you guys use for like law language Laura maybe better on that so I mean like uh, there is something called sometimes simple misdemeanor or somebody doing like something on the street that also will be charged by the by the police like the police would take care of that issue and charge that person but is not crime what can we call those kind of things mm -hmm. The police only enforce crimes. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a crime. It's a simple misdemeanor, just like if you run a stop sign. That's a crime, and it's a simple misdemeanor, So, and that's what we enforce. But it's it's a $50 fine, and it's, um, but but it still is. It's going to show like a crime on their, on their, in think, the record and something like that. That's what I'm worried about. Yeah, criminal record. Is it on their criminal record? I think that's what yeah, the yes. concern here. Yes. Just like if you got a Paula ticket or something like that, it would. It so could, if I could got be, what? If you got uh, in the bar after hours or uh, p person in uh, Paula. Okay. Yeah. Under age. Yeah, under legal age. Yeah. And, and I never got those, so yes. I don't. Okay, and, and when, when, when that's happened, and is, is this shown in their background as a criminal? Yes. It's, it's shown that you had a simple misdemeanor, yes. just like if you got any other, it's it's the lowest level of misdemeanor. Would that be like a speeding ticket yes. or something? Yes. Same as the same as well. Except. And there's two, two other class. things that add to that. One is that there are opportunities to expunge your record. But two, if it's a juvenile, then juvenile records are typically sealed. And this sealed. is not the kind of offense that you'd wave up to an adult. It's a simple misdemeanor and so forth. So if it's a juvenile, it would be handled at the juvenile court. But the answer is yes, it's on your criminal record. Yeah, yeah. If it's by an adult, uh, it would be there until expunged, if at all. Education. Any other um, discussions on the amendment that is before us, which is um, taking out some of that language related to throwing stones, bricks? So, if no other discussion on that, we're just going to take a vote on that change in language. We are not approving this entire document. That's all right. And just a voice vote here. All right. So all in favor say, uh, of making the amendments as stated by Councilor Harmson. Uh, if you're in favor, say aye. 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 If you're opposed. Nay. No. Okay. Motion passes four to two. All right, now we can take up the topic that Mayor Pro Tem just um, kind of talked about, which is what are other considerations that we can have um, to relate to? The rest of them. Yeah, yeah I, I really would like to see a level of if, if there is no way we can do this, and I, 
either just not to do it at all and, and that's it, but now you are changing the language. Can we just figure out like a level of like warning and like start with just education and warning and after that do that? Well, what you can do is, is you can, as I mentioned earlier, you can require a warning to every individual before they're charged. Again, officers would need to make sure they do a good job documenting the warnings that they've given, but yes. But I want to be clear, that would be incorporated presumably in a criminal statute. So first time we would write it up, they get a warning. Second time, now they're you know getting the criminal, criminal charge, you know, with a fifty dollar fine or whatever the council chooses to make it. So the the the, um, the warning will that appear on their background? Well, when you say in your background, it would not appear on their criminal record or any kind of backgrounds check. It would be documented in the police sure. uh, station. They they would know it. Yeah. Okay. And and also yeah, it will be also not documented only on the police department. It will be. It's not going to show anywhere in their background check. Not in a background check. Typically, background checks look, f well, typically, I, I should caveat that, typically they look for convictions and so forth. Now, there are some who, who are thorough. Let's say there's a job applicant and they write down that I used to live in Iowa City. There are some employment they agencies go. who will contact the police department and say, hey, what do you got? You know, open records on John Smith. You know, in your town. Now, that's an extreme example, but it could happen. That is an extreme <laughs> example, but I want to be completely absolutely appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. I, I, I certainly think that the um, idea of, of the warning and stuff uh, makes sense, and it sounds like that's kind of already the process, much as we talked about with the uh, nuisance, um, the noise nuisance. The one thing I, I, I don't know, and maybe maybe the, the chief or somebody else could answer this. Just I, a concern I have that maybe can be answered. Um, so I'm thinking back again to the circumstances that I saw kind of go down. And in that particular case, it was a appropriate for the, if we'd had something like this, to be able to at the bare minimum confiscate the, the weapons and, and remove those from the situation um, and to respond. Um, if we require a warning, would that make it so that an officer can't take away the toy? I mean, it just it feels like like we might, n there might be circumstances where we'd want that to happen, where we want the the ability of somebody to continue to, to with this behavior, or if the thing is, um, I, I'm just a th I'm thinking out loud here because this is a is a new proposal. Do you what I will add to it is that we have the opportunity to work with the school district to educate on um, whatever ordinance that we have. So mm. if we state that you know the warning is going to um, you know, the warning will confiscate, you know, the Orbeez gun. And then the second one, it is a $50, you know, fine. Um, it's a simple misdemeanor. It can be on your record. So I do think that if, if we, you know, confiscate it, you know, the item and we kind of work with the school district and, and social media outlets to warn the public of you know, you can no longer have this in public. I, I think I would be more comfortable with that approach because we've done some work to kind of say, hey, you can't have this. And I think that might take care of the situation. I will say that, the, you know, probably 50-50. Um, you know, some kids are playing amongst themselves and others aren't involved in 50 other percent of the time. You know, it's not appropriate, and it is becoming a dangerous situation, not mainly between the guns so much, but other things that they're doing, like they're running in the street and doing all that type well, of stuff. Doesn't that I, violate the Constitution? Because uh, no. they're, they're not committing a crime. If it's just a warning, like, you, we can't seize property, right? Like, no, we, we would still make it a crime. It would just be the penalty would essentially be... Well, that's not quite fair either, uh, because it's not like a court would be imposing uh, the warning. But I think we could still probably seize the. So if I feel we don't have to take it from them because maybe somebody doesn't know anything about what we're doing right now and this law after we implement it, and they just doing that, and the first time they this to learn about it, why we take it from them if we give them a warning saying that don't do it on the public. But you can do it wherever you want to do it somewhere else, okay? But not in public. Why we take it from them? 
we should and, be digging. And I'm okay. Like and I'm okay with that. Uh, the question would be is what is the educational um, tangible material and I don't know that our officers will be expected to you know walk around with stuff but you know um, I think so we can do education at the schools you know like uh, if, if what we want to do is education and helping kids understand the harm of shooting Orbeez guns and why that we as a community think that this is wrong and want to address it I do not think enacting a new part of our criminal code is the way to do that. We have spent no resources other than the one uh, um, meeting last summer on addressing this particular issue in ways outside of law enforcement. And now we're talking about all these ways outside of law enforcement that we want to address the issue, which I think is right, but what's in front of us is creating a new crime. Yes. Yeah, I'm still going back to how can we not make it a crime. Okay. I, I guess the, you know, and sorry, I'm not taking over the conversation, but go right ahead. Go no, right no, ahead. No. Yeah, no, I hear it. How do you not make it a crime? And I guess. Um, can, can I offer? Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Sure. I just, I want to. You need to trust your officers, right? They understand that this is not the preferred approach. They don't want to be issuing tickets. They don't have to issue the tickets in every circumstance. You think about how we've handled fireworks. Um, we've got all kinds of fireworks violations every year, and there's concern that there's not the community education out there. So the officers use their discretion. We give you that report every year that shows that we go and we try to hunt down and chase all these calls for service that we're getting. In most cases, we're issuing warnings. In very rare circumstances are we issuing the citations, only when there's an extreme situation where there's a, a major public safety compromise. I would urge you to consider trusting your officers, give them this tool, and understand it's not the default. I think that's true in all cases, because I do fundamentally trust our officers. One more question for you, Eric. In order to seize an Orbeez gun that looks like a real gun or an Orbeez gun that has been shot at someone and there's a concern of injury or people running into the street, things like the, the mayor was saying, the only thing that we would have to do currently is say that that particular toy is capable of shooting something that could be classified as a dangerous missile, correct? You're talking about under the ordinance already on the books? Correct. Yes, it would have to be capable of firing a dangerous missile. We would need to prove that up. And your concern, as stated earlier, was you wouldn't want a magistrate to dismiss that. But what we're talking about is a citation that someone would then challenge in court or try to defend in court. By then, any deterrence is done. A child. Okay. What do you mean? No, we're talking about children, too. About a child well, not necessarily. Child. I mean, any person. Oh, yeah, theoretically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah any yeah, person. You're right, you're right. But, but if, if what we're trying to do is deter this behavior, we're not talking about prevention when we have citations, right? Mm -hmm. If what we want to do is deter this behavior, if, if the officers say, this is a dangerous missile, I see what's happening, they're shooting frozen Orbeez uh, pellets, they have the discretion to address that already. How would they prove that it was frozen? Because oh it's going to thaw. This is not. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, can, you, can, you, can, you, what? can you do it? Can you just read if you have the, current, yeah. the, old, like the current ordinance in the, front of you? The part that we keep talking about as far as being capable of shooting something, okay, okay. reads. Carrying prohibited, it shall be unlawful for any person to possess or carry any toy pistol, toy gun, or other toy arms or slingshot out of or by which any leaden or other dangerous missiles may be discharged. I have a question right there. It, all right, is, so if someone was you know downtown or wherever can the police get someone with an orbeez gun with that written language right now mm -hmm. I, I would 
based on the language we've got now? Yes. No. That's a question of legal interpretation. It's not clear, correct? Uh, I, I think we, uh, I, I would advise our officers not to seize those guns because I don't think we could sustain that in court. And I think we would run the risk of running into trouble, you know, stopping and seizing uh, toy guns that don't meet the ordinance. I was asking you to read that because I want to ask you what the punishment right now currently for those. So that is currently also criminal and a, and a simple misdemeanor. Yeah. It's an unscheduled simple misdemeanor, and it I believe. Be criminal. It puts people in harm's way. So, yeah. okay. So I guess the council to kind of bring this in okay. because we need to. Yes. Um, yes. What is the. So, you know, we already went through one amendment. Um, we've been discussing what are other ways to maybe titrate um, this to look more like a civil penalty with um, a warning than a simple misdemeanor. It sounds like, uh, Councillor Burgess, correct me if I'm wrong, we could add language specific to the Orbeez guns and maybe add in language relating to uh, water, um, some type of water balloon or liquid balloons um, to the current. Understanding that you may not be a, a you know, a proponent of this, my question is more would that, based on what you're hearing uh, by the council, would that address and add that specific to be defendable if they, if, if um, individual was cited? I think that's a question for our attorney. Okay, sure. Well, I'm sorry, and I, I missed your, your question. It, so essentially, if we added Jess Orbeez yeah. and liquid balloons or projectile or whatever you want to call it, and to the existing, would that give the officers the, uh, um, the, the, the leverage that they need when they really need to go to the next level with someone? Sure. Uh, whether that authority comes from the uh, proposed ordinance as amended or we were to amend 873, the toy gun, the current ordinance, um, and I assume you're talking about with discharge as opposed to the carrying uh, component, uh, sure, we could write it in such a way. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to use the word Orbeez because, again, as uh, the chief mentioned, there are other brands and so forth, and we don't want to. Sure. But if, if you're talking about making sure that we're inclusive of Orbeez style um, guns and water balloons or other projectiles, yeah, whether we, you know, outlaw it in the proposed ordinance or the new ordinance would make no difference insofar as the police's ability to do something about it. Again, the only other thing I would add, if you were to add it to the present ordinance, that uh, is, a, I believe, is an unscheduled simple misdemeanor, which carries um, a minimum fine. I, boy, it's, I'm, I'm rusty here, but I want to say of between 65 and maybe $850. Not that it would be at all likely that someone would get a penalty that high, but in any event, even the minimum fine would be higher than the $50 fine that's in the ordinance proposed before you. So it sounds like, if, if I'm understanding this right, that there may be more more benefit to simply amending the existing ordinance because then there is not to to use some comments from earlier um, creating a new criminal uh, criminalizing something new correct um, and it is possible to be inclusive of the specific problem that is trying to be addressed by this new ordinance by putting in language that talks about gel pellets and water balloons right Right in the existing well, ordinance. Well, I, I don't want to speak for Councilor Burgess. No, uh, no, I'm not. And I'm know, not either way, to. we are adding something new. We are Correct. criminalizing something new. But it's not an entire new ordinance. Well, right. But I guess my point is that that doesn't make a lot of difference. Now, whether okay. Councilor Burgess feels it makes a difference, I'll obviously defer to her. But uh, either way, you would be uh, criminalizing behavior that is not currently uh, okay. illegal. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I guess with that information, I would be more interested in just amending, um, maybe doing some more amendments to the current ordinance that's before us, um, just to kind of not, well, commonly known as Orbeez. So I think um, 
that kind of takes, you know, um, accounts for whatever the uh, other objects are out there. So I think we could be good there. Now the only question is, um, at least for me, that's remaining, um, after we've already done the amendment and that passed that Councillor Harmson suggested is, you know, do we have in here, you know, that required warning and then, you know, doing the, you know, doing the, uh, you know, going the criminal route. I, I guess um, what I will say is that from this, from last year to this time, they've been operating with the educational part to this and there has been some deterrent but i think if they were able to say you know this is the ordinance you know knock it off if you continue to do it this is what we're going to do so but, i mean isn't that to jeff's point that saying that having this ordinance doesn't mean that they just go straight yes. to that it means that they can they have essentially in their the dreaded word in their toolkit to be able to say this is illegal knock it off don't do it anymore right and then they go oh you've done it again right i mean so this if i can just speak to that and i appreciate what jeff said about trusting your officers um if you remember the the um traffic study report one of the things that the uh that they mentioned was how many warnings we give. We only actually write citations on about 25% of our traffic stops. So our officers always take that. Um, if, if we can seize guns when we have to give a warning, that's, I, it doesn't, we're not, at, we're not in it for the 50 bucks, I'll tell you that. Um, so, but we just need a mechanism, and I, and I know the criminal thing gives some of you all pause, and I can appreciate that, but, Everything we enforce is criminal and we give a lot of warnings and that just gives us the mechanism in which to encounter these and do encounter these most of the time youth and and work with them on like and it also gives the parents i think that what one of the benefits of this is we can talk to parents and say hey your kid is going to get a ticket for this do not let him go run around at the park with things like this so let, let's them know that they can help with the education let them know that there is there could be a, a ticket involved so um, again it's not it's certainly not about the money, and it's certainly not about putting some, something on someone's criminal record, but it's just about giving us the authority to do the education, and then in cases where we need to, to enforce law before it gets to someone shooting someone's eye out, someone getting an assault charge, which is going to be on their criminal record. We are going to try to, we want to get, it, get in front of that. At least for me, given all that I know that has happened, um, you know, between um, those that have these and, and the officers um, and the danger that some of these activities have presented, uh, they could have, you know, turned out into a horrible situation. I think I am comfortable uh, with the current amendment um, that's been proposed, you know, supporting what's before us tonight. So I guess the only question the council are we wanting to go ahead and vote on um, was before us as amended. You mean in terms of the the amendment that Councillor Harmison did? We already voted on that in that oh, past. Okay. So now, what yep. is before us? I apologize. Yep, as it's amended. As as amended, and so this is like the vote to pass it. Yes. Okay. This is the first reading. This is a three reading. Right. First reading. Okay. So are we ready to vote unless there's any other comments or is there any other avenues council want to talk about? Hearing none, roll call please. Burgess? No. Dunn? No. Harmson? Yes. Sola? No. Teague? Yes. Alter? Yes. Motion fails three to three. All right, we are going to move on to 9D. Thank you all.
Adjusting Park Hours, Ordinance Amending Title 10, Entitled Public Ways and Property, Chapter 9, Entitled Parks and Recreation Regulations to Adjust Park Closure Hours. This is the second consideration. Staff is requesting um, expedited action. Anybody want to read? Did you want to do it? Can I do it? No, no, because uh, Andrew asked for to do that. I saw oh, yeah. Andrew all the time going to do it. I don't care. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is, which, okay. Consider, which consideration are we on? Mm -hmm. We're on second consideration? Second consideration. All right. I move that the rule requiring ordinances must be considered and voted on for a passage at two council meetings prior to the meeting at which it is to be finally passed, be suspended, that the second consideration and vote be waived, and the ordinance be voted on for the final passage at this time. Moved by Dunn. Second. Seconded by Sala. Uh, anyone from the public like to address this topic? See in online. Uh, welcome, Noah. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, welcome. Yes, welcome. Hello, it's been a long time. I can't believe I just listened to an hour of Somber Town City Council meeting. That was pretty wild. Uh, the three of you should change your name to Burgermeister Meister Burger. I voted for that proposal. And um, now this is agenda. item number nine. I'm, I'm moving on to this agenda item, Bruce. You can, anyways. So, my question is: so what? So what's the penalty for somebody who is not in authorized hours for the park? Like, what happens to them? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, and. Uh, council can uh, bring up any conversation that someone asked when we do our re remarks. Yeah, just don't have... But you can continue to speak at this time. Okay, so my understanding of it is, is there issued a misdemeanor, correct? For being past park hours, there's a misdemeanor. Eric, you can answer if the council won't. I think we'll engage, Hello? we'll engage with your questions after you're done with your comment. Yeah. Council may ask, yes, council may ask staff to respond to a concern or a question posed by the public or to follow up with the speaker when we deliberate. Okay. So my point is that people do get criminalized for being in the park that's a public facility because they're in there for the so-called wrong hours. Now, lots of reasons people could do that. A big reason is because this city refuses to house them, they are forced to seek shelter somewhere else that happens to be on public land. And instead of giving them housing, we have a landlord to the council that rather hoard housing, be landlords, be ex you know, do more capitalist exploitation of the working class. So this is a, the city refuses to fund housing and criminalizes you if you sleep in the park overnight. You should just not criminalize people for being in the park because they're in unauthorized hours. It's ridiculous that you're criminalizing it at all. Yeah. I don't know. You consider that? This is state for good not punishing already vulnerable people, not hard. Also, fuck you, Jeff, as always, never trust cops. Thank you. Anyone else like to address this topic? Seeing and hearing from no one else, council discussion. I don't think this is this is criminal or anything, right, Jeff? Well, I, I think the intention is that if there's someone found that they're moved along, um, you know, when it's closed. Uh, otherwise, I think it would be a trespass charge is what you would probably see. And what's the trespass charge? Can you explain that? Because I have no idea. Oh, what a trespass charge is? Yeah, that, what, what that will lead to. Like, uh, yeah. 
was that? Is that a criminal thing also? It, it, it can be, a, well, it is a criminal offense, but a, a typically a trespass uh, charge Ooh. requires a, a warning, if you will. That uh -huh. is, you are trespassing, you are not allowed to be here, you need to leave now. Now, if someone says, no, I'm not leaving, well, okay, now it can be a crime. I see. Yeah. Well, I, I, the other thing that I would mention is, like, I don't know that... Um, no, uh, I don't think that we're engaging in maybe potentially the right way. Um, this ordinance expands hours, doesn't it? If I'm understanding, no, for, 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 for two, yeah, for, for it's not. Park and um, for two of the parks, yes. Chansey and Green. It, does it otherwise affect? I'm sorry, I'm just trying. I had a difficult find, time finding this. It yeah, is it on the. It, it doesn't reduce it. No. no. Yes, currently. Um, College Green Park does not close. Chauncey Park does not close. This officially closes those parks at midnight. So, Only oh, midnight okay. is later than other parks. Okay, right. okay, I understand. Yeah. It still allows you to walk through those parks, right? right. right. Trails, sidewalks, those things. Unless you find somebody. Else. I see, I see. Uh. Yeah, I, I just, I, I wasn't know that. I thought this is just like also a ticket kind of or something like that. Uh, what, what, what's prompted this? It's the, it's the it, it enables us to pursue trespassing if needed. So you don't, you don't get the, you don't get a ticket for being in a park after hours. You will have someone approach you and say, you need to, this park is closed, you need to move. And this is what no, we do at you, other parks get, already. There'll be a trespass. Well, I guess I understand that that's the effect, but is there, like, is there a, a problem that we're experiencing that's facilitated the, the desire to pull this up? That's, that's really what I'm curious about. Yes, um, we've had encampments at College Green Park. Okay. That like a camping only, or can we just say no camping? So I think all of our, I mean, as I mentioned, all of our parks close from dusk to, are open dusk to dawn, except these four are not. And so they're trying to. Why is those two? All the other, all, all parks, currently, all parks except three um, close. Um, and we're suggesting that we close two of them at midnight. So Blackhawk Mini Park would remain 24-7, not, not closing. That's part of you the You mean we can mall. go and come there, and it's OK. But don't come here on Chansey. That is not OK. Oh. It, to be clear, it's, it's, uh, the ordinance is not specific to camping. It's that you can't be in these parks. Be because the problem was coming. I'm That's sorry. why I'm bringing it up. The problem the, was some people was climbing there. Right. And, and the, that's the pedestrian mall is active nearly 24 hours a day, right? You could argue maybe 20 hours a day, you know, but, but the, the pedestrian mall is plenty active uh, with open businesses and commerce taking place at 1 in the morning, 2 in the morning. Um, that's not the case for Chauncey Park. That's not the case for College Green Park. I mean, like for the even the other bar close is closed. If somebody like is slept there because they are homeless or anything, is that also they gonna be charged trespass? No, we, we work with that situation the same we do with. I mean, this this is a regular occurrence where we're working with the shelter house outreach position that you all helped us create, and we're trying to move people into permanent housing. Uh, we've shared some of those statistics with you. I think. Our outreach team does a really good job. The Shelter House outreach team does a fantastic job. We've had over 100 successes in getting people um, yeah, housed. But that's, that's our first approach. That's always our first you approach. You mean tomorrow, if, uh, after with this embellishment, this, if somebody was uh, like a, a homeless person slept on the Chances uh, or Collie Green Park, you are not going to charge them with trespass, but you will work with them 
to figure out the solution for their situation. Yes, we would con we would continue yeah. to work with them, but we but would have, not we would have the tool to say, if if you don't work with us, then we are going to trespass you. At which point, again, because of the nature of a trespass, they can get up and leave, no criminal charge. If they refuse, say, no, I'm not leaving, I don't care if it's illegal or not, then they okay. would be susceptible to a criminal charge of trespass. That would be for somebody who will come for fun to camp, they have a house, and they have everything that they want to do. I'm just giving you the example of somebody who is sleeping there. You will, you will find something for them for that night to sleep, not like go figure it out tonight and come, us to, come to us tomorrow so we can help you. Yeah, I mean, I, the best I can give you is, is I, I, and I think the, the council's aware of the approach that we've taken. Um, we've had encampments and locations for weeks and months last year. We had encampments that had multiple fires, repeated fires in the same location. We should still exercise the patience and the desire to try to find housing for those that want housing. Um, sure, I understand that, Jeff, but I just want it for this particular situation. You're going to work with that person to figure it out for them for that night. But they're not going to be saying, you just, we don't care where you go, but get out right now from here and we figure it out for you tomorrow. But can you find in the same day or night a place for that person to sleep if he's not sleeping on the park? If that person wants that assistance, then yes, we would. But there may be some people that don't want that assistance. No, yes, I'm, I'm just asking, you know, if they don't want that assistance, that's something else, of course. You're not going to force them to Correct. be assisted. I understand that. Correct. But yeah, just let it take it that way. So. Hearing no other <coughs> comments. Roll call, please. Dunn? Yes. Harmson? Yes. Sela? No. Teague? Yes. Alter? Yes. Burgess? Yes. Motion passes five to one. Can I get a motion to pass and adopt? <coughs> so moved. Second. Moved by Don, seconded by Alter. Roll call, please. Harmson? Yes. Sela? No. Teague? Yes. Alter? Yes. Burgess? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Motion passes five to one. Nine E is bicyclists and crosswalks and using sidewalks. Ordinance amending Title IX and Title Motor Vehicles and Traffic, Chapters 1 and Chapter 6 to require drivers to yield right of way to bicyclists at crosswalks and to require bicyclists riding on sidewalks to obey pedestrian devices at signal intersections. Staff is requesting expedited action. I got it, I got it. I already got my own, I got my own. I move that the rule requiring that ordinances be considered and voted on for passage at two council meetings prior to the meeting at which they be finally passed be suspended, that the second consideration and vote be waived, and that the ordinance be voted on, be voted on for final passage at this time. Well by done. Second. Second by Alter. Anyone from the public like to address this topic? If you're in person, please step forward. If you're online, please raise your virtual hand. Seeing no one, council discussion. Roll call, please. Sela? What? You called my name? Oh, 90. I did, yes. Yes. Uh, Teague? Yes. Alter? Yes. Burgess? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Harmson? Yes. Motion passes six to zero. Can I get a motion to pass and adopt? So moved. Second. Moved by Dunn, seconded by Burgess. Council discussion. Oh, actually, roll call, please. Uh, Teague? Yes. Alter? Yes. Burgess? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Harmson? Yes. Sella? Yes. Motion passes six to zero. Item number 10 is announcements of vacancies previous, and we're going to go to 10A. Um, Planning and Zoning Commission, one vacant city to fill unexpired term. Senior Center Commission, one vacant city to fill unexpired term. Applications must be received by 5 p.m. Tuesday, July 9, 2024. Airport Zoning Board of Adjustment, 
one vacancy to fill a five-year term. Airport Zoning Commission, one vacancy to fill a six-year term. Historic Preservation Commission, College Street, one vacancy to fill a three-year term. Historic Preservation, East College Street, one vacancy to fill an unexpired term plus a three-year term. Historic Preservation, Jefferson Street, one vacancy to fill a three-year term. Historic Preservation Commission, Willon Avenue, one vacancy to fill an unexpired term plus a three-year term. Vacancies will remain open until filled. We're at item number 11, which is City Council information. Nothing but no. Yep. Quick Today congratulations to all of the high school area high school <laughs> graduates. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we have three counselors that have graduates this <laughs> That's year. That's true. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Hearing nothing else from council, we're going to go to item number 12, which is report on items from our city staff, city manager's office. Nothing tonight. City attorney. Nothing. Thank you. City clerk. No, thank you. Item number 13 is uh, adjournment. Can we get a motion? We will come back to our work session, but can I get a motion to adjourn from um, the formal meeting? So moved. moved with a request for a brief break. Okay, <laughs> moved by Alter. Seconded. Second. <laughs> Seconded by Dunn. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, we are, uh, motion passes six to zero. Uh, we are adjourned. <laughs>